This is Pieris Repe. It looks delicate and lovely and almost fairy-like as it moves through the garden. The problem is that if you want to grow kale or broccoli or cabbage, then you will discover that when these creatures are in their baby caterpillar stage, they are complete dicks. I grow a lot of kale, and I'm here today to tell you how I personally beat them. I use a combination of two preventative methods. Both are easy, and it works really well for me. I also use a sacrificial trap crop to figure out when they're active, and that lets me know when I need to be extra vigilant. This is my sacrificial broccoli plant. It was an extra transplant that I didn't need, and I put it in this planter. You can see I have spinach started down below as well for the fall. But this guy serves the purpose of telling me when cabbage moths are active. I'll zoom in down here. These unfortunate souls are the stems of prior leaves that were attacked by cabbage moths. And when that happened, I could see the damage. It was not hard to spot. I picked the cabbage moths off. My son very happily squished them. And I enjoyed watching that, candidly. Now, we are in a, a period of very low cabbage moth activity, which I can tell just by looking at this plant. It hasn't been attacked any time recently. Now, just hand picking the caterpillars and squishing them is fun for small children and for homicidal gardeners alike. But personally, because I follow a specific diet for MS management, and that involves eating a lot of kale, it's just not practical for me to rely entirely on hand picking. It's fine for the trap crop, but for my main garden, I use a different approach. I use two different weapons in combination. Weapon number one, BT spray. BT is short for Bacillus thuringiensis. This is not a chemical spray. This is a bacteria that specifically infects caterpillars and worms. I feel good using it for a couple of reasons. First, it only lasts in the environment for about three to seven days after you spray it. It's not a long-lived element out there in your garden. And secondly, it does not affect earthworms or honeybees. It will if you sprayed it like right on a ladybug larvae, it would probably take out that ladybug larvae. But short of that, it really doesn't affect the beneficial insects in the garden that we're trying to protect. And so I do feel pretty good about using it. That said, because it is short-lived and because it would wash right off every time it rained, I don't rely just on this. I have a second weapon that I'll show you here. I have an entire video from last year about how we built these covers, but ultimately this is half inch PVC using standard fitters and connectors covered in floating row cover. And then I did buy the PVC clamps that are designed to work with these. I screwed those onto the raised bed frame here. I take a short length of PVC, I gather the ends of this up, I tuck them around the PVC and roll it up, and then I just press that into place and that does most of the heavy lifting as far as securing the cover. I do also use, as you can see, a few PVC clips, sorry, clamps, on the ribs to further hold this in place like this. Especially if there's a storm coming, I'll make sure that they're well covered. Generally, though, these PVC rolls at the end, I've got one over here too, really do hold these down almost with no additional support. They're really easy to take off when I'm ready to do a harvest and really easy to put back on again to make sure that the cabbage moths don't get in after I've harvested. You can see my cover here. I have folded it back to show these baby kale plants. When they are in this stage, the delicate little seedling stage is when they are the most delicious to cabbage moths. And so as soon as I see these pop up, I do go in and give them a preventative spray with some of the BT. In theory, the cover will keep them completely safe. In reality, every now and then, a moth will get under the cover and when that happens their larvae would be able to just feast undisturbed with no predation by birds or anything else my kale would be a goner so i am going to spray them now and then recover this bed so on the off chance anybody managed to get in here and lay an egg they will not survive long enough to destroy my kale one more important benefit i find of using the row cover is the eating quality of the kale i find that when i grow them under the row cover it filters the sunlight a bit and it prevents the leaves from toughening up Think of it as the opposite of hardening off your transplants in the spring so that they can live through direct sun. By keeping them under the cover and filtering the light, I prevent the leaves from getting completely thick and tough. I like that kale is a robust salad green that I can put dressing on and like prep a, a week's worth of salads and it doesn't get mushy, but sometimes it is nice to have it just a little softer so that you don't have to massage 
the living daylights out of it every time you make a salad and growing under row cover definitely helps with that. I am hoping this is especially helpful for anybody that planted kale or cabbage or broccoli in the spring and had something just devour it. We are coming into the time of year where you can start a fall batch of those same brassica crops. And if you'd like to give it a second shot, try the BT spray and a simple cover of some kind to keep the moths off of it. And these crops will be redeemed for you and you'll be willing to give them another shot in the future. Let me know if you personally have any great methods for taking care of these really super annoying cabbage moths. Uh, this works for me, but there are a thousand approaches out there and I'd love to see comments if anybody's got a better option than this. I've got a couple more video topics coming up. I'm going to do one on saving seeds because I am now saving all the seeds from my spring crops. I will likely also do one entirely devoted to chard because I'm having a really nice growing season with chard this year. I've never grown it before. I'm loving it. I just kind of want to spread the love. And then I'll do one on the cost of growing your own vegetables and whether or not that's really worth it. Uh, it is a subject that people talk about a lot. In the meantime, I hope everybody is having a great growing season. Thank you for watching and I really hope it was helpful. Bye.